Before the first generation of computer, man used his fingers, ropes, beads, bones, pebbles, and other objects for counting. During this time, electricity was not yet invented. The first generation of computers used vacuum tubes. Vacuum tube is a sealed glass tube containing a near vacuum which allows the free passage of electric current. It is an electronic tube about the size of a light bulb. The first computers used vacuum tubes for circuitry and magnetic drums for memory, often enormous and taking up entire room. It relied on machine language. Some examples are Univac and ENIAC. They were very expensive to operate and in addition to using a great deal of electricity, it generated a lot of heat, which was often the cause of malfunctions, like defect or breakdown. Vacuum tubes generate more heat, causing many problems in temperature regulation and climate control. Tubes were subject to frequent burnout. Input was based on punched cards and paper tape, and output was displayed on printouts. Some advantages of first generation are, this was the only electronic device and the first device to hold memory. Disadvantages are, they are bulky, large in size, Vacuum tubes burn frequently and they were producing heat. For a second generation of computers, transistors replaced vacuum tubes, allowing computers to become smaller, faster, cheaper, more energy efficient, and more reliable. Though it still relied on punched cards for input and printouts for output. Second generation computers moved from cryptic binary machine language to symbolic or assembly languages which allowed programmers to specify instructions in words. High-level languages were also being developed at this time, such as early versions of COBOL and Fortran. The year 1959 marked the invention of transistors, which characterized the second generation of computers. Transistors are three-legged component which shrunk the size of the first-generation computers, occupied only one over one-hundredth of the space occupied by a vacuum tube. It was more reliable, had greater computational speed, it required no warm-up time, and consumed far less electricity. Advantages of the computers in second generations are the size reduced considerably. They are fast and much reliable than the first generation. Disadvantages are they overheated quickly and there were maintenance problems. Third generation of computers arose in 1965 with the invention of smaller electronic circuits called integrated circuits, or ICs. Integrated circuits are square silicon chips containing circuitry that can perform the functions of hundreds of transistors. Transistors were miniaturized and placed on silicon chips called semiconductors, which increased the speed and efficiency of computers. Instead of punched cards and printouts, Users interacted through keyboards and monitors and interfaced with an operating system, which allowed the device to run many different applications at one time with a central program that monitored the memory. Computers for the first time became more accessible to a mass audience because they were smaller and cheaper. Some advantages are, ICs are very small in size, and there was evident improvement on the performance. Unlike vacuum tubes, silicon will not break down easily. It is very seldom that you will have to replace it. Silicon chips are relatively cheap because of their small size and availability in the market. It also consumes less electricity. Some disadvantages are ICs are sophisticated and there were also maintenance problems. The microprocessor brought the fourth generation of computers as thousands of integrated circuits were built onto a single silicon chip. Microprocessor is a silicon chip that contains the CPU or central processing unit, the part of the computer where all processing takes place. The Intel 4004 chip developed in 1971 located all the components of the computer. Fourth generation of computers also saw the development of GUIs, the mouse, and handheld devices. What in the first generation filled an entire room could now fit in the palm of the hand. In 1981, IBM introduced its first computer for the home user, and in 1984, Apple introduced Macintosh. 
As these small computers became more powerful, they could be linked together to form networks, which eventually led to the development of the internet. Fifth-generation computing devices are based on artificial intelligence. These are still in development, though there are some applications such as voice recognition. The use of parallel processing and superconductors is helping to make artificial intelligence a reality. Quantum computation and molecular and nanotechnology will radically change the face of computers in years to come. The goal of fifth-generation computing is to develop services that respond to natural language input and are capable of learning and self-organization. Computers today are faster and more powerful. They have tremendous data storage and processing capacity. New brands and models would come out the market almost every month. Many clones or imitations of the IBM have become even more powerful and a lot cheaper. Computers became more affordable. Computers can now be found in homes, schools, offices, etc. There has been a tremendous improvement in software technology too. Different software applications to choose from, word processing, spreadsheets, data database management, games, and entertainment, to name some. Computer subjects are now being offered not just to college students, but even to elementary and high school. 